since your firm mostly invests with low net diversifying strategies, making uh, beta bets is not a big part, right? Um, could you touch on ILS reinsurance, healthcare market neutral, convertible arbitrage resurgence, or systematic strategies in general? Sure, happy to. And I think uh, a theme that goes through all of that, and I think uh, an intent investor focus that has shifted that becomes more prevalent is also on earning above the risk free rate, right? If risk free rate is at 5%, your hedge funds have to earn. Eight, nine, ten percent, so that uh, in the end you have like a risk-free plus four percent ish. It's risk-free rate plus fees plus an excess return. Exactly, exactly. And I think also to the uh, the multi PM model. I mean, with Exodus Point sort of introducing a hurdle, and I think there is a little bit of that where just uh, a lot of uh, in in some models there's a lot of fees involved, and at the end of the day, the investor has to get compensated for taking the risk-free rate, but also for taking the risks of sort of the ac active. Uh, um, management and so where we see this for example in reinsurance you get paid on the collateral you get the, re the, the risk free rate and then on top of that you get the reinsurance premium after the losses so that's an interesting point what we see there as sort of an innovation after sort of this bad experience is that uh, the use of reinsurance balance sheets has come more into focus and they are more able to sort of deal with issues of tying up collateral after loss events and of uh, more efficiently using sort of also structural leverage that can be used in that uh, framework. So those are kind of things that we think is like positive innovation. Um, and then on the convertible ARP side uh, as well, like we believe that you're able to sort of earn the risk free rate. And then in addition, you have sort of these additional premia that uh, you get compensated for. And given the market structure and sort of the, the prevalence, like in these exchanges, it's not that all the players uh, participate and all just the risk premium player can just participate in these deals. So in the end, these companies want like five, 10 big investors to be able to sort of uh, back a new refinance deal. And those will be able to generate attractive returns. And so we see sort of uh, granular differences which allow for attractive returns at the end of the day. Uh, Samuel, your, your firm is a family office slash asset manager from Switzerland. How are managers in Europe different than US-based managers? Um, I'm not sure if they're necessarily super different. I mean, in the end, it's like they, it's, a, it's one industry. Um, I mean, we are owned by the Prince family of Liechtenstein, so that's kind of our heritage, and we're Switzerland-based. Um, a lot of our clients are also in, in, in Europe and in, in Asia. Um, I think what for us, I mean, one difference is uh, sustainability, which is much more of a topic in Europe than it is uh, in or kind of ESG, especially around these words. With, uh, so that's kind of one key difference, I would say. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, one th aspect that we might add to this panel as well, and I guess we're within the camp of, of, of PEMCO and, and, and K2 with uh, the increased uh, acceptance of SMAs as a, as a way to invest as well. I mean, we've been, we've been doing that for over 20 years, and it gives you sort of this transparency and control, which alleviates some of the, the concerns on the operational side. And also, it allows you to use capital efficiency more, 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 um, much better. And it also allows you now, and that's kind of maybe to tie it back to AI and, and data, is with all of this data of having sort of daily transparency on positions and trades, it, uh, I believe that that's kind of an avenue that could be quite interesting in the future in sort of using that data better to kind of also give feedback to managers in the sense of maybe when they do something which they could be doing better because not all the hedge fund managers are uh, like super quants or are super focused. They're great PMs, great analysts, but they might not have the, the best use of their own data. So their even allocators can be helpful in, in that regard. 